Hello, it's Jack here, and in this short video, I'm going to present you uh, the so-called advanced equity momentum strategy. It's a kind of uh, all-weather equity momentum approach, which is always fully invested, or maybe fully invested, depending on our on our requirement. And by saying fully invested, it doesn't mean that we always will have uh, stocks in the portfolio. It may happen that we will uh, set the strategy so that if there are no interesting stocks on the market, uh, we will put partially or fully bonds to our portfolio. Uh, the whole idea is based on Andreas Kleno book, Stocks on the Move. So if you want to uh, find out the details, uh, how it's calculated, uh, just uh, please check the uh, the book. But basically, the whole thing is uh, about uh, picking the stocks which are having momentum, which means that we are interested about stocks which are in the uptrend. And here the momentum is uh, calculated using a uh, mathematical approach. So it's uh, so-called annualized exponential regression slope, which is multiplied by the coefficient of determination and it's calculated for two periods for half year and for the full year and then uh, we are taking the average of it but as I said if you are really interested about the details how it's calculated uh, I encourage you to check Andreas Kleno book. Uh, basically the strategy is a long-term strategy and we don't have uh, for example the trend filter which says either be fully in stocks or uh, be out of the stock market. We can set it uh, basically to meet our requirements. So we can always be fully in stocks, but we can also say in the application that we want to be only in stock market if the uh, stocks are having uh, are meeting uh, uh, specific requirements. So basically, uh, then it can happen that, for example, 50% of, of the portfolio is in stocks and 50% is in bonds. So let's maybe go quickly to the details of uh, the settings you can find in the strategy. So it's the advanced equity momentum. If you press edit, you, you will see the settings. And in fact, from the application point of view, it's very simple. The first settings which I'm interested in is uh, for the calculation of the momentum ratio. And you, you see the short-term moment, momentum and long-term momentum. And you just specify how many days. So by default, I'm using here the half year, which is, let's say, um, around 125 days, uh, trading days. And here is the full year um, momentum uh, calculated based on 250 days. And then you have here what is really uh, controlling how the portfolio, how the strategy will behave. Because first of all, you can say that you want to put only stocks into the portfolio which are meeting a minimum momentum requirement. So if I check it like that, I'm saying that if, for example, you have NASDAQ 100, uh, calculate momentum for each stock in that uh, index and then just pick only those stocks to the portfolio which are having at least this ratio at the level of 25. If it's below, then we are not interested about such stocks. And of course, if there are no a single stock, for example, which is meeting that, that requirement, then uh, we will be in cash or we will be invested in uh, some uh, bonds like for example here we can put uh, a total bond market. We can also say that we want also measure the volatility of these uh, stocks and it's inverted volatility which means that if it's higher the value here in fact the volatility is lower. If this value is lower, the volatility is in fact higher because it's inverted volatility. So you can play uh, with these two settings. You can just uh, check any uh, variant you want. If none of this is set here, then uh, the, the, the portfolio will be always fully in stocks, but with the uh, stocks which are having the highest momentum. If you want to set the minimum momentum, you can just select that. If you want to add also the volatility part, you can just use this parameter. Now, 
In other settings uh, here, we can exclude stocks which are, for example, uh, very volatile, meaning that if in the last, for example, 90 days, uh, a certain stock uh, moved more than 30%, then we can exclude such stocks as well. And then we can just uh, not um, put it to the portfolio, even if it would have a very high uh, momentum, for example. Another detail is uh, buy a sell a signal. Uh, so basically that says us that we want to, for example, at the end of the trading day, when we have all the data downloaded to the software, we want to calculate the, the, the ranking of all stocks for a, from the given universe, let's say uh, for NASDAQ 100. And we will execute the, the, the trades the next day on the close. So uh, let's say that uh, today we are just calculating the ranking at, uh, when, the, when the session is closed. And we know in the, in the evening what will be, what should be the portfolio uh, construction next day. So at the uh, next day on the, on the close, we just execute all the trades. Here we specify which, uh, which universe we are using to calculate the, the momentum. And here if we don't want to store uh, cash in our um, portfolio, but we want to use rather bonds, we can specify which ETF, for example, we can use here as a bond. Here I put uh, total bond market uh, from Vanguard, it's a mutual fund just because it has a longer history, but you could, for example, put ETF with the symbol BND and it will be the same thing. Uh, you can also say here uh, what is the starting capital uh, and you can set also how maximum and uh, what is the maximum number of stocks you want to uh, put into the portfolio. So if you have uh, a, a smaller capital, then you may say that you don't want to have more than five or 10 stocks. If you have a bigger capital and, you, and your universe is also bigger, let's say S&P 500, then you can say that you want to have even 50 stocks maybe in the portfolio. So you can also adjust that. And here you say how often you want to rebalance your portfolio. And by default, it's uh, on a monthly basis, but you also can change that. So it can be weekly, it can be uh, every two months, it can be even yearly. But really, you can just give it a try and play with the different uh, settings. So I think this is it um, for, from the settings point of view. Uh, also, maybe the transaction costs. Here I just put the values from the interactive brokers. And in uh, the real world, let's say, if you want to use it, okay, so if you set it, you can just run the, you can just run the um, simulation for, like I hear it's set for uh, NASDAQ 100 from 1995. You can see uh, how it performed uh, on a monthly basis for certain uh, settings. But you can just uh, have a different result depending on what you set in your particular case. But what you can be interested about is that uh, um, if you, let's say, are rebalancing every month, that uh, let's say that at the end of, um, let's say, October, on the 30th of October 2020, you, at the end of the day, uh, calculated and, and you saw that before rebalancing, that was the uh, construction of your portfolio with uh, these uh, weights here in the portfolio for a specific uh, symbols, for a specific uh, stocks. And after rebalancing, this is a new uh, construction of your portfolio. So if you calculated that at, on the 30th of, um, of October 2020, let's put it here then you could execute these, uh, these uh, trades to make it uh, like that uh, on the next session on Monday. And you could see, for example, that 67% uh, uh, of the portfolio was, uh, is in stocks now and 33% is in bonds. Um, so this is all from my side. I encourage you to just give it a try. 
and test your uh, specific scenario or to use it for your specific uh, market. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.